Hey everyone! If you're not a piano player, in today's video, I will teach you how to play piano and sound like a piano player. Many of you out there play bass, guitar, saxophone, trumpet. Piano is such an important instrument for all musicians. It will help you with composition, harmony, arranging. And yet, if you yourself are not a pianist, where do you start? What do you do? In today's video, I will provide a remedy for one of the most common problems I see out there with non-pianists trying to play piano. With one simple trick, you can start sounding 10 times better within a matter of moments. Before we begin, for those of you who asked about Skype lessons, you can find me on Instagram at Ruslan Piano and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Ruslan Music. Or you can leave a comment down below and I'll reach out to you myself. So here's a big problem I see out there with non-piano players trying to play piano. Suppose you ask a non-piano player to play a C major 7 chord on a piano. Now, many non-piano players know that a C major 7 chord is comprised of the notes C, E, G, and B. And so, they'll go ahead and play you their version of a C major 7 chord. And it'll sound something like this. Now, are they wrong? No, this is indeed a C major 7 chord. It just sounds really muddy and not really pleasant to the ear. Because there's a secret piano player rule. And the rule goes something like this. The lower you are on the keyboard, the wider your intervals have to be. The higher you are on the keyboard, the denser your intervals can be. Now, many non-piano players don't know this rule. And I have a quick trick to show you guys to fix this problem once and for all. Here is the trick. You take the notes you played. You leave the bass in its place. And then you start moving the other notes an octave up one by one until you arrive at a sound that is more pleasant to your ear than this sound. So let's do it. Here's the chord. The bass stays in its place. What's the second note after the bass? The note E, right? Let's fly this note one octave up. Let's see what we end up with. Okay, we took this note and flew it one octave up. It sounds a little better, but still a little muddy. Okay, what's the next note in that chord? The next note over there is the note G. So we flew the E one octave up. Now let's fly this G one octave up to over here. Okay, sounds a little less muddy already, a little better. Let's try to fly the last note one octave up and see if that sounds any better. So what were the notes? We already flew this one. We flew this one. Let's fly this one an octave up and see what we end up with. Wow, that sounds a lot better than this. Right? That sounds a lot better than this. And to be honest, you can continue with the method. Even though this sounds great, you could say, I still want to keep flying notes one octave up. And then you take this note and you fly it here an octave up, and then you end up with this. Ah, that sounds really nice too. At this point, all of these chords are going to sound nice, because you're already out of the danger zone of being too dense, too low on the keyboard. If a piano player would play a C major 7 chord, it would probably sound more something like this, than something like this. So the trick is really simple. You keep the bass where it is, and you start flying the rest of the notes an octave up. And then you can keep going. Generally speaking, those are inversions of the chord. But I wanted to present it in this systematic way, without too much theory behind it, but more so just a practical tip that you could apply right away without having to understand too many profound theory things. You play a chord, if it's too low, you keep the bass there, and you start flying the rest of the notes an octave up. And you end up with a much nicer sounding chord. Let's do this with another chord. Like, one of my students came up to me, a really good player, 
and played a B flat minor seven chord on a piano, and it sounded something like this. Ugh. That is so muddy and ugly. <laughs> And again, the problem is that they're right. That really is a B-flat minor 7 if they play it like that. It's not like they're wrong. These really are the right notes for B-flat minor 7. They just sound pretty awful that low on the keyboard. And if you're not a piano player, then you don't necessarily know better. So, okay, let's apply the trick to this chord. As we said before, the bass stays in place. What's the next note after the bass? This note. Well, we're gonna fly it an octave up. Let's see what we have so far. Okay, the next note was this, right? Let's fly this one an octave up. Already a little better. The next note is this note. Let's fly this one an octave up. That's better. That's definitely better. Okay, let's see if it can be even better than that. We already flew this note from here. But let's try to fly it one octave up again. Oh, okay. Now that's the first one yet that sounds like a piano player's B flat minor 7. As opposed to this muddiness. And again, if you want to keep applying the trick, you can take this note and fly it an octave up and see what you end up with also sounds pretty good. That's something a piano player would play. That's something a piano player would play. That's something a piano player would never, ever play. So there you have it, guys. A quick fix for a really common problem. Don't play very dense intervals on the low part of the keyboard. It just sounds muddy. And if you want to improve that, you now know how to. My examples were based on some really simple voicings. If you want some more advanced voicings and some of my bread and butter go-to most useful voicings, you can click on the annotation above and it will take you to a video I made about how to construct awesome voicings where you can also download a free PDF file with some of my most useful go-to bread and butter chords and you can start practicing them right away. That's about it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content, hit that subscribe button down below. I make a lot of these kinds of videos, giving immediately applicable advice to improve your musicianship right here and right now. I reply to every single person's comments personally and coach you guys one-on-one -on, -one on how to make the most of these videos and how to facilitate your own musical growth as fast as possible. If you're already a subscriber, hit that notification bell down below so that when I make these videos, you'll be the first one to know about them. Thank you for checking out my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.